The chief of the world's second largest pharmaceutical company, Christopher Wiebarker, joins me right here from Sanofi. Great to have you on the show. Pleasure to be here. And uh, my first question is, you here you are in sunny Davos on a day like this, but are you losing sleep about Indian patents? Well, I think uh, we'd, we'd all like to have a different dialogue in, in India. Uh, there, there's no question that um, there has to be access for all medicines for everybody. But equally, if there isn't a return on that, how are we going to be able to justify investing in new medicines? And, and I think uh, if you look at India, there are about 350 million people who have an OECD level of income, and there are 800 million who are really quite poor. And so how do we work with the government to really make sure that we're, we're finding that right balance? So, uh, you know, we're not really fighting access, um, nor do we want patents to block access. I think what we'd really like is, is, is just a dialogue on, on the issues. Longer term, um, you know, I, I, I still believe that India is, a, is an important healthcare market. We have been in India since 1956, and I think this is more of a short-term issue that I hope won't um, dissuade many companies from investing there. But there are so many companies which are complaining. The Novartis with Gleevec, you have Roche facing a similar challenge, Bayer's, Nexavir. All these companies are saying that we can't do business in India and we'll possibly go to the risk of even filing a WTO complaint. And when India says that there's been no violation whatsoever of international patent standards. I, I don't think a WTO complaint is on the table today. Uh, I think the, the, the question still comes back. If you actually look at what happens to access once there is a compulsory license, and, and the reality is is that we haven't really seen significantly greater uptake. Um, we have seen many people actually die from cancer because they aren't, aren't actually able to even get to the hospital. Uh, there are many medicines that are available um, that are not patented, and yet they're still not accessible. So to me, the real issue is not patents. The real issue is access. Uh, I don't think there is equal access yet. Um, this is a, clearly an ambition and, and an objective of the Indian government. And I think if we work together, we can, we can make that happen. And I think we can avoid an awful lot of the, you know, the discussion around patents, which, which isn't necessarily really uh, addressing the, the, the main issue of access. And the access to poor subject, which India obviously is closely defending. For instance, a cancer drug, which costs $4,500 per month for treatment, is available with a generic version at $140 per month. So that's a huge difference when it comes to millions and millions of people who are suffering from that. How would you balance access to poor with also not sacrificing intellectual property rights and giving credible technology in, in large pharma? Well, there's a couple of solutions, um, and we've, we've been um, uh, practicing them. I mean, we had a big debate over HIV medicines, for example, where you had, a f you know, the patient numbers in, in the United States and, and, uh, and Europe were kind of hundreds of thousands, and there were tens of millions in Africa. And, and there we introduced differentiated pricing schemes between countries. So um, in many parts of Africa, for example, um, medicines are provided um, at a no cost, no profit basis. Uh, I think if I look at, at, a, at a country like India though, um, I don't think it would be fair um, to provide medicines to all Indians at a no profit, uh, no loss basis because many can afford to pay something. And, and so can we find a differentiated pricing um, uh, structure so that those who can afford medicines do and that then uh, allows companies to continue to invest because even though many of these medicines are important, we still have huge unmet need in, in cancer, in diabetes, in, in mental illnesses. And, and yet, for the people who absolutely can't, then, then we should have uh, differentiated pricing um, structures, including um, free um, or no profit, no loss. Uh, I chair with uh, Bill Gates uh, a roundtable for the entire industry where we are, for instance, trying to address 10 neglected tropical diseases. There is no market for that. Um, and we have all come together and we have metrics not only for delivery but how we can eliminate uh, many of these diseases. Our company, for example, uh, has been able to um, make huge progress against sleeping sickness. That consortium of companies is treating one billion people per year. So this is an industry that does understand the need for access. But equally, if we don't have patents, we're going to freeze science where it is today. 
And I can tell you that people who are suffering from Alzheimer's disease, people who are suffering from certain types of cancer who can't be treated, want us to continue to do research and development. I think you're mo one of the more philanthropic voices in the big pharma industry. But even President Bill Clinton uh, way back uh, said that he regretted the mistake that the U.S. made with not providing cheap HIV uh, drugs in the 1990s. Do you feel that not providing cheap cancer drugs right now or other drugs of various terminal uh, diseases is going to be a big regret? Well, I think most companies actually are providing those medicines. Uh, uh, I, I can't speak for all the companies, but my, my, my understanding of other companies, certainly our company does. We do have access programs. We, we actually will provide them um, cheaply or for free in many cases. The question is really being able to scale them. Um, many of, the, particularly in cancer, these are extremely sophisticated drugs. You know, if someone has um, a cardiovascular problem like hypertension, well, that is reasonably easy to diagnose. We slap a, a blood pressure cuff on, we can provide them with a tablet. Y you know, if you have breast cancer, for example, is this, a, a, um, uh, is this an estrogen um, driven? Is this progesterone driven? Is this a, is this a triple negative? Um, is this hormone driven? You know, you have to be able to, to diagnose a tumor genetically in order to be able to match this up with the right treatment. So there needs to be not only a, a program of access for the medicines, but also a, a program to provide the medical education so that the, the right patient gets the right product. Um, so this is a much more um, sophisticated problem, and that's why I think the best solution would be to have a, a, a partnership with the Indian government and say, okay, uh, how do we actually make this happen? In, in Russia, for example, uh, we have a, 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 a program called Give Life a Chance. So we found that in, in certain um, parts of Russia, um, the budgets weren't enough um, to provide our, our medicine, Taxotere, um, for breast cancer. And we could have reduced the price of, of Taxotere, but what we found happened when we reduced the price is that um, because the budgets were limited, that, that therefore they, they just um, took those savings and spread it out over other um, products. So we said, no, let's do something else. We're not going to reduce the price, but if you guarantee to treat every woman who needs this treatment, every woman who has breast cancer, and you, you, you offer that, um, we will provide half um, for free. And, and, and therefore, we actually had a system that wasn't just a reduction price, but we actually made sure that every woman who had breast cancer actually got a treatment for it. And we could then provide all of the training, and, and we've had much greater uh, success in treating uh, women for breast cancer. So that's the kind of a program that actually needs to be put in place. Sometimes it gets reduced very simplistically to price. But when you're dealing with cancer, we're dealing with, with, with a much more difficult disease to treat. Okay, this dialogue, will you take it to India? And are you having this conversation with Indian government as you know, part of the big pharmaceuticals uh, globally? Yes, I, I was in India in, in October. I addressed the OPPI, which is the... Um, uh, Indian Trade Association and we had members of, of the government there um, and I actually um, was interviewed in the press in India um, and, and raised this as a possibility and I, I think I think between differentiated pricing and, and, and joint access programs which we've done in many countries we can do it but you know the reality is there is a um, there are always different political groups and and there's always a group that says well let's go for a simple solution somewhere but I think it would be tragic if we, we just really reduce patents without actually helping anybody to, to, to get better treatment. And speaking about political groups, I know you're making your next visit to India in March. That's going to be an exciting time. Yes, uh, uh, I, I know uh, everybody in India is, is looking to that. I think, you know, there are many challenges in India, um, but many opportunities. I mean, India has really made uh, huge progress, probably not in the last few years in the, to the extent that it would, would like. Um, but, you know, from, from where I sit, um, you know, if you are a long-term investor as we are, um, you, you have to bet on demographics and you have to bet on the, the fact that India uh, really has a very good education system, uh, has very good medical systems here and there, and will do better in that. And so I think uh, longer term, you know, India is a place where we want to be and we'd like to help um, not only uh, build our business there, but also help to reduce some of the health challenges in India. 
We look forward to that optimism as well as the differential pricing system, which perhaps might revolutionize the patent laws. Thank you so much, Mr. Weirbecker. Thank you very much. Pleasure.